What's good, math family? In today's video, we're gonna look at the square root method, and I'm gonna show you how and when to use it when we're solving quadratic equations. When we're solving by the square root method, just remember that in once in the in the most common scenario, we're gonna see an x squared term and a constant. So the first thing we always want to do is just to get x squared by itself. So after I add 75 on both sides, we have 3x squared is equal to 75. So that's the first step, x squared by itself. Yes, it's not totally by itself, so let's divide by three. Once we do this now, we have x squared is equal to 25. So the x squared term is by itself. Now we just wanna get rid of the exponent, and we do that by taking the square root, and what we do on one side, we do to the other. So x is now equal to the square root of 25, which is just positive and negative five. Now, let's say if we go over to our second equation, right? Same exact process. So when we look here, we need to move 50. So negative 2x squared is equal to 10 minus 50, which is negative 40. So remember, when we're taking the square root of any number, it has to be positive. We can't do that unless we're talking about imaginary numbers, and right now we're not. So this should always raise an eyebrow. However, in this problem, right? it turns back positive. So x squared is now equal to positive 20. x squared by itself, get rid of the exponent. x is now equal to a positive or negative square root of 20. If we wanted to uh, get the decimal form, all we need to do is use our calculator, right? And we'll say that x is equal to positive 4.47 or negative 4. 0.47, right? So these are first two examples. Now the last one is a little different. So after we get x squared by itself, we notice that 81 is negative, right? And like I said, that should raise an eyebrow. So we continue going and we notice that x is equal to the square root of negative 81. And like I just told you guys, we can't take the square root of negative number right? So we know that there is no solution to this example. So when we talk about solving by the square root method, this is the most basic form where we'll see an x squared and a constant. But in the next part of this video, I'm going to show you a different version when we use solving by the square root method. In this part of the video now, we have to understand that not all of these problems are going to look the exact same, meaning x squared and c. We may see something similar to this where we have a binomial and that's where completing the square comes in. But well, we're going to say that to the last part of this video. So let's say we focus here, right? Getting x squared by itself, 3x squared is equal to negative 15. When we divide by 3, we get x squared is equal to negative 5. We know we can't take the square root of a negative number. So we already know this is a no solution problem. But let's focus our attention back on this problem. Because like I said, they're all not going to look like this. So the first thing we want to do is to get this x squared by itself. So what am I going to do? Get rid of my fraction. Multiply by 4. We have 3 times x squared minus 17 is equal to 24. Now we divide by 3. x squared oops, minus 17 is equal to 8. So now we're going to add 17, right? So I get x squared is equal to 25, if I'm not mistaken. And then now we could get rid of our exponent by taking the square root. And our final answer is x is equal to positive or negative 5. So now that we've got this down pat, we're going to go over to the last part of this video where we focus on completing the square using the square root method. Last part of this video, completing the square uses the square root method. So just remember, this is a situation where we can't use regular factoring, meaning that there's nothing that I could multiply to get 216 that adds to give me six. So what we wanna do is create a perfect square trinomial. And the way we do that is we take the B term divided by two and square. So six divided by two is three, 3 squared is 9. So I know here, x squared plus 6x plus 9. That is the perfect square trinomial we need to solve this problem. 
and what I do on one side, I have to do to the other. So I added nine there. I have to add nine there. Now at this step, we're going to simplify this by just writing its binomial. So what binomial expression when we square it will give us this? If you forget, it's just the answer for B divided by two. So six divided by two is three. So we know X plus three squared is what gives us that trinomial. And this is equal to what? 225. So now that we got X squared by itself, now we're just following that same square root method, right? Because the whole goal is to solve for X. So now we have X plus three is equal to the square root of 225. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that is 15. It is. So plus or minus 15. So now with this step, X is equal to negative three plus 15 and X is equal to negative three minus 15. So this answer here, we know X is equal to positive 12. And down here, we know X is equal to negative 18. So this is how we use the square root method to complete the square. Now let's look over in our second example. And in this example too, right? If we look, we can't factor that, right? There's no two factors that will multiply to give us 16 at 14. So what we're going to do is the same thing. We're going to move 16 over. So I have X squared minus 14 X is equal to negative 16. When I follow this uh, B over two squared, right? My trinomial is going to be x squared minus 14x plus 49, and that is equal to negative 16 plus 49, right? We completed the square by adding that 49. Now at this step, we're going to rewrite this into its binomial. So this turns into x minus 7 squared, and that is equal to? Uh, let's see, 49 minus 16, that is equal to 33, right? So now we go ahead, square both sides. This just turns into X minus 7 is equal to positive or negative square root of 33. So now we create our equations. X is equal to plus the square root of 33. And matter of fact, let's just get what the decimal version. So it's 5.74. Let's just round this off to 5.7, right? So now X is equal to, I wanna say that's 12.7, let's double check. Yep, X is equal to 12.7, that's the first answer. And X is equal to seven minus 5.7, I wanna say that's 1.3, but let's just make sure. Yep, X is equal to 1.3. So when we're talking about square root method and quadratics, we're going to use it also for completing the square. We're going to have a video on that coming out shortly, and we're going to link our old ones down below. But really hope that this square root method video was helpful for you on how and when to use it. Thank you guys so much for joining us today on Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave comments for future videos you guys would like to see on our channel or if you had questions from today's video, thank you all for joining us today.